Hey, welcome back to another episode of Warner Farms. So today I'm going to show you guys Drone Deploy, which is the software that I utilize on the drone. So you're first going to go to dronedeploy.com and go ahead and create your account and then later launch your dashboard. Now this is my dashboard. These are all the maps I have made and from last year. And I'll go ahead and show you the first thing that you would do to create a map. So you're first going to click this blue button and it's not going, for some reason, it's taking me clear down over a little ways away from where I actually want to be. So I'll click and drag this field boundary to where I want to create another map. Okay, where am I? Actually, I want to be a little bit higher here. Okay, so I want to be in this field. So, uh, you first want to go ahead and draw the boundary around your field by clicking and dragging these dots and doing the best you can to cover your field. So after you have this done, I'm not going to do this very accurately, but for time's sake, I will do this as quick as I can. So roughly when you have this all done, uh, you can see exactly where the drone's going to fly. It's going to fly east and west, and it's going to fly at about 247 feet. Now, I fly at 360 feet just for the mere fact that uh, it does a lot better of a job for producing maps at 360 feet. Um, you can decide that when you decide to get drone to play, but I feel that 360 feet's a good representation of the maps at that height. So after that, you can go down to advance and adjust how many pictures are actually taken out in the field and the amount of overlap each picture produces in each picture taken. Uh, normally, this is always set to 6575 when you first launch the advance tab. Um, I set mine to 80 and for side lap and 80 for front lap just for better uh, resolutions of the maps to be produced and for better help in the stitching because when you're out in the middle of the field flying and it's taking pictures, more than likely you're going to get the same image almost over and over and over again if there's nothing wrong out in the field normally. Um, so that's going to cause issues stitching. So the more overlap you have in the pictures, the better, because it's going to be able to grab out on those odd features that's out in the field, allowing stitching to go a lot more smoothly. So, so when you get done uh, planning, uh, you can actually produce a live map instead of taking these images home like what you would normally do and upload them into Drone Deploy on your computer at home and wait for processing and stitching to be done in order for you to view the map, which takes a few hours, actually, depending on how big the field is, uh, a few to almost a day. So what Live Map does, it generates an actual live map as your drone is flying real time on your phone, and it stitches the images for you, creating a high resolution map that you can actually uh, see and uh, zoom in on while the drone is flying so you can determine those problem areas as soon as possible a lot quicker than waiting a day at most or even more just to see what the actual problem is out in your field. Um, it currently is only supported on Apple but uh, hopefully later this year, hopefully soon since I'm going to be flying actually next week this wheat field because uh, we're actually going to be top dressing this wheat pretty soon with uh, nitrogen, with uh, 28. So uh, it is not supported with Android though. So that is an issue for now. Hopefully later this year they will actually get this adjusted and uh, allowing us to actually use it both on Apple and Android. Another feature that I forgot to mention, um, I believe, uh, yes, flight direction. Um, as you can see here, I would normally, since we farm this field as well, along with this field, um, we would, I would normally launch from about right here, 
but I don't, in order to not sacrifice flight time, I would not want to fly clear back into this corner. So I'm going to set it all the way down to negative 90 degrees. Come on. I guess I can manually enter it. Um, that way it starts right here and immediately starts mapping as soon as possible. And actually it doesn't matter because we planted this north and south but if you were to fly east and west in this field, it does not matter for stitching or it's not it's not going to um, distort the map when after planning is done or after uh, producing the image or the map. So don't worry about that. You can fly in any flight direction you prefer. This is just to have a better, I guess, orientation, I guess you can say for me. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but... As you can see up here, this tells you that this map is going to take about 17 minutes and it's roughly 47 acres. Now, granted, you know, it estimates this. So it's either tack on a plus five or minus five for this estimation wise. Um, for images, this is the amount of pictures that are going to be taken during this flight. And this is just um, an, act, an estimation on how many batteries you need. So say like a Phantom 4 Pro, or a Phantom 4, you should be able to fly this with one battery, but just to be safe, they're tacking on a second battery just to be safe. So now you can actually name this field, so whatever you actually call this field, we actually call this field South of 1250. And then you're done. So all you have to do down here is click Save. And that is it. Also, the nice thing is, I have on here that I downloaded because there's certain apps you can add on Drone Deploy. I'm not gonna cover those, but I'll cover this real quick since it's right here. AirMap helps me determine whether or not I'm going to be in any airspaces, which is useful because as a commercial pilot, essentially what I am, uh, you do not wanna fly in any advisory zones or flight zones. So this right here tells me uh, is this field going to be in the flight path of any uh, advisories or flight paths of any airports? So that is a good feature just because there is a lot of airports near us. And it just helps me determine whether or not it's safe to fly here. So uh, I'll go back to the dashboard then and I'll show you a couple of maps I've done uh, since last year. And... I'll go ahead and show you this one. This is a pretty good representation of soybeans uh, that are drought stressed. Um, this is the ortho mosaic map that it will generate after stitching is done. Um, as you can see, there are some problem areas out here, so to better diagnose those, I'll switch on the plant health. And as you can see, you can start to see these problem areas a lot better. Now, we believe this might be a spreading issue these uh, yellowish, green, reddish strips. We're going to determine that this year by working with our soil guy and pull, pulling sample zones, soil samples right out of these uh, bands and out of the centers here to determine whether or not it is a spreading issue. It might possibly be a spreading issue, but we're not sure. So we're gonna determine that this year by using the drone deploy map and GPS on my phone to determine right where those spots are to pull the soil samples from. Uh, I did not fly a lot of corn, so all the maps I'll show you are going to be beans. So moving on, this is a field that was f affected by SDS or sudden death syndrome. Now you can actually see the SDS very well on uh, the ortho mosaic map, but to better see this uh, on a plant health spectrum you'll just go ahead and click the plant health and you can actually see it a lot better by looking at that now if i wanted to determine how uh much this actually covers in acre wise on this field i'll go ahead and go to the area calculator and i'll just do a quick uh rough estimation on this um by just clicking and dropping those pins so this actually shows it's about 0.6 acres. I'll call that about 0.5 um, acres that this actually uh, covers. 
So you can go around and do these little areas and just determine how many acres the SDS actually affected in your field. So otherwise, uh, that's pretty much drone deploy. Um, I'll go ahead and show you one more map just to get a better uh, representation of drone deploy again. Um, so this is another field that our irrigator actually passes over about half of this. Um, this is another soybean field that were that was drought stressed last summer. So when you kick on the plant health, you can actually see a better representation on where the irrigator went and passed over this field and where the irrigator did not pass over this field. So another neat feature you can do is elevation. I forgot to mention that. Um, you can actually see the low spots and high spots in this field. Um, so this would be a good example or a good map to determine where uh, the water drainage is in your field and where the high and low spots are in your field along with uh, producing uh, tile maps to help determine where you need to tile in your field. So that is, that's a good feature. I mean, we haven't really used it that much just for the mere fact that we have not needed to do much in elevation on our farms, but later we might actually be putting in some tile on some farms, on a farm actually, not farms. Um, and we might actually use drone deploy to help determine where exactly we would need uh, those tile lines. So otherwise that's drone deploy. Um, I'm not gonna get into the pricing or anything. You guys can look at that yourself, but uh, if there is not, if, if there was something I did not cover on drone deploy that you would like answered or would like some further help on, feel free to message me or comment down below. I'll uh, try and get back to you as soon as possible um, and help you with your issue or problem or whatever else you may need. But otherwise, uh, don't forget to comment and subscribe and like the video down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.